Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Bite Size Podcast and Mentoring with Geraldine. And I'm very lucky to have Christine from the Herbal Extract Company in Sydney with us again today. And um, we're going to talk about a herb that is everywhere and that you've all got in your garden, or if you haven't got it in the garden, the neighbor probably has, and that's thyme. And it's a really super interesting herb, and it's one that I think is every herbalist has on their shelf. And, you know, mixed with the other herbs is an amazing remedy. So um, tell us about it, Christine. It's very exciting. It's got lots of stories. and um, Yes, it does. I mean, it's um, traditionally, as you said, it's part of every herb garden, even the most modest herb garden will have thyme in it. Um, and, it's, and it's got such a wide reputation, not just medicinally, but culinary as well. Yeah. I mean, I have a raw material here um, and everyone will probably recognize this from their spice rack as well. Yes, it's got um, thyme and everything. <laughs> and, you know, so it has this wonderful aroma and reminds me of sort of breakfast mushrooms or something. <laughs> <laughs> the culinary um but no because of that it's become the mainstay of the modern material in medica i think as you yeah. said it's um everywhere and it has while we're doing that i'll just show you our uh our time oh it's very mm. like yeah it's very dense and rich very with rich. essential oil like the oils get extracted mm. and it has that beautiful thyme smell to it yeah um so uh, yes, yeah, so it has a, a really long history, not unlike the other herb we recently spoke about, ivy leaf. Yes. Uh, for yeah. cops. Mm. Again, a, a wonderful herb for our modern time. Um, and it's good for children as well. So similar in that way to ivy leaf. Um, but it's been used for thousands, like more, more than over yeah. 4,000 years ago. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, and um, also Dioscorides, you know, the Greek physician from the first century, they were both using it for respiratory disorders. Wow. So this is traditional medicine. It really is, isn't it? Um, and it continues to be one of the most recommended herbs for that indication for coughs and respiratory disorders. Um, yeah. You've got some, in your latest monograph, you had some really interesting stuff about um, Nicholas Culpepper. So if you read yeah. about Nicholas Culpepper, of course, he recommends everything for everything. So including a snake bite. But <laughs> he, um, he is one of the people that really got it out there. He got us all studying it because he wrote so much. And um, but his comment that you've put in the, um, in the not the monograph, in the highlight is he says about time, it's a noble strengthener of the lungs, as notable as one as grows. Neither is there scarce a better remedy growing for that disease in children, which they commonly call the chin cough. So whooping cough is what they used it for back in the day. Of course, now antibiotics. Um, so it purges the body of phlegm. It's an excellent remedy for the shortness of breath that kills worms in the belly. And being a notable herb of Venus provokes the terms menstruation, gives safe and speedy delivery to woman in travail, which is labor, and brings away the afterbirth. And I love this bed. And it is so harmless. You need not fear the use of it. <laughs> I think he sums it up perfectly, like the modern use. Mm. Yeah, it's still um, known for this. Yep, we're Not still using it. Yeah. Yep, still using it for all of those things. So, um, I mean, we do see people with the aftermath of whooping cough who've had the antibiotics and they still have the cough. And um, and it's certainly indicated for that. This being a public podcast, obviously, we do have to re recommend the um, use of antibiotics in whooping cough. And see your doctor if you have whooping cough because it's contagious. So, um, now, the... I love the fact about the lymph gland as well that you found. Yes, well, you might have heard of the thymus gland, yeah. which is, um, a lymph gland in the, che you know, in the chest area. Um, and it actually was named after thyme. Thyme's botanical name is thymus vulgaris. Mm -hmm. And um, like uh, medieval anatomists yep. named the thymus gland after Thymus vulgaris because uh, it apparently looked uh, not unlike the leaves of yeah. the tiny little leaves. 
so which is what we use in in our medicine um so you, you may have heard of rosemary gladstone she's like a yes. you know the herbal medicine doyen from um america yep um and um she actually says that it's really good for the thymus gland as well right. funnily enough like doctrine of signatures yes. which is the primary gland of the immune system um and she said it often, you don't hear about it much because it atrophies as we get older. From about um, 13 to 14, it starts to shrink. Um, mm -hmm. However, she says that the thymus glands said to school, to teach, you know, it's a quote from her, to train the helper T cells, which mm -hmm. are arguably the most important um, cells in the in adaptive immunity. So mm -hmm. when we are exposed to something, um, you know, adaptive immunity is activated by pathogens and yep. the T helper cells are the most important part of that immunity. So the thymus gland is there to school and teach and train the T helper cells from our adaptive immunity system. And um, she said, um, so basically how to fight infection and deep seated infection. So um, that's what the thymus gland is for and time is very good for the thymus gland. So. Wow. Um, she said, yeah, it's, it's the best herb for colds and flus and, and fighting infection. So um, she, she says, one can never have too much time. And I mean that literally as well. <laughs> I think this plant is really way underused in our modern materia medica yes. and in modern herbalism. And she said, it's prolific, it's sustainable. It grows easily in all climates. We have so many different varieties. It's beloved by pollinators. Why wouldn't we have it? Yes. Um, she, she uses time a lot and because she feels it's abundant and she says it's a herb of our time. <laughs> yes, a herb of our time. And the thing is, I, I mean, it's, it's definitely another 2020 herb and, um, and you don't use it in high dose either. So, of course, it's absolutely perfect to go in the herbal remedies where we want to keep it quite a low dose herbal. So they, you know, people who are complaining about the flavor or children who don't want to drink it. So it's a really good one to have um, as as part of everything as part of your foods so you know all through winter of course people put it in their soups mm -hmm. and they put it well in the summer i guess they put it on their pizzas when they eat pizza obviously with a gluten-free base we'll okay. just mention that <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah it's just it is i mean it's been around for four thousand years and it was on the papyrus as well from the egyptians so in the, um so it really has been out there and saying, hey, you need me, and it grows so easily. I mean, I've got two different ones in my garden mm -hmm. at the moment. So the, um, and you can use it fresh from the plant, of course, you know, it can go in the cooking. And of course you can use the dried and the, the thyme as a herb, you know, thymus vulgaris is just phenomenal. It's just a brilliant herb. Right in a cough mixture, a herbal cough mixture. Mm. Yeah. yeah herbal cough mixture is the way to go with a bit of time in there um because it does it kills off those bugs as well as it you know heals and restores and repairs and supports so and helps that cough so it's a fantastic fantastic herb so um right well i mean i think this one's turned into quite a quick one but um i think we will leave it there because it's a good one it's definitely a goodie and we've all got it on our shelves and um and you'll find it in you know tablet form but that's very different to having it as that liquid and getting all of those essential oils and the organoleptics and everything through that um, herbal extract as we use it as herbalists. So it's an amazing, amazing herb. So thank you very much, Christine. It was a very quick one today, and um, but that's completely cool because you know we've all got things to do, and I'm sure everyone is just taking a moment to catch up with um, the podcast and all of the interesting information that I give you all on a regular basis so I will see you very soon Christine thank you so so much for being with us again today thank you